<laughs> One thing they could have done. Oh, 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 this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> you just touched on a very hard thing about doing the effects for this movie. Hi. Hi, doggy. Welcome back to another episode of VFX Artist React. We got some great things to look at today, and I'm looking forward to seeing Clint's reaction to it all. I can't wait to react! Whoa, dude. <laughs> you guys, you gotta warn me, man. Hi. Ooh! Okay, so this, I remember really taking me off guard because it's like he's missing half his face and it looks incredibly realistic. The small detail with like the blood on the left side of the pillow yeah. is so disgusting. See, up until this point, you know, if you wanted crazy makeup effects, you could add it to somebody's face, but you could never subtract from somebody's face. And that's what makes this so jarring is because you can actually see inside of his cheek. So, but yeah, look at his eyeball. Look at the underside of his eyeball. You never see an eyeball just exposed like that. It, it, it emits this visceral reaction of like, ugh. Dude, you can see his tendons like yeah. going across his face there. A little bit of like his bone, yeah, poking through. So I'm like also noticing they're doing this very cleverly too. They're hiding most of it most of the time. A lot of people like to say that Christopher Nolan does not like visual effects. He only ever does practical effects, but that's a misnomer. He's actually a huge fan of visual effects. He just uses them very specifically. Two of his movies have won the best visual effects Oscar. You live, you die. In the 90s, when people started doing animation, it's like, oh, I can just make a 3D model and I'll put bones underneath, which will morph and stretch and move the model. Simple enough, right? Well, once we tried starting to make things photorealistic, we suddenly realized that that didn't look real because that's not how our skin moves. Our skin doesn't just slide around. We have muscles underneath our skin. And the muscles, when they're tight, they're gonna bulge out. And when they're loose, they're gonna sag and they're gonna cause wrinkles. And our skin is just on top of this web of muscles and tendons that are pulling things around. So for something like Too Faced, you need that complexity of the muscles underneath pulling. And you can actually see the tendons sliding against each other. And it's all hand animated, by the way. It's just a testament to us starting to understand how to animate humans and human faces. What, did they have like any tracking markers? What do they do there? So Christopher Nolan likes to shoot his movies with a lot of darkness, right? Mm -hmm. And you've probably seen facial tracking where they have little black dots on the face. You're not gonna see the black dots on his face when he's in shadow. So they're using little white markers, but even then those are in shadow, right? They fall into shadow and you lose them. So what they're actually doing to track his face, it's not the main camera that's tracking his face. They actually have other cameras on set and they have little ring lights around them that are very, very faint, and that's all retro-reflective material. All those other cameras are seeing nice, vibrant, bright dots, even when it's in shadow because of the retro-reflective material, but the main camera isn't seeing that at all. It's a really ingenious way to have motion tracking dots that you can see with multiple cameras, but not with the main camera. Another cool thing is when you're using multiple cameras, you can triangulate the positions of those dots and get 3D motion tracking data out of it. So that's how they're tracking his face to put the 3D model on it. It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair! Spoilers, you probably, hopefully you've seen the movie by now. He dies. Um, <laughs> in the scene where he's dead and like they're rocking his face back and forth, his resting expression, he looks like he's smiling, even though he's just blank. There's happy, there's happy Harvey Dent. He's like, wait, that's no good. He's supposed to be sad now. <laughs> Ooh! Really? You're yeah. Always, what? You're, you're always sad when you die, so. <laughs> you will fail. You know, Mortal Kombat was one of the better video game movies that came out. Oh. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Go! Dude, what if that was your yearbook photo? Like, what if that was you? Usually when you do a morph, you try to pick landmarks that stay the same. Like, his eyeballs would morph to where the dragon's eyeballs are, but instead his eyes turn into teeth. <laughs> oh, they do! So this came out a year after Independence Day. Uh... <laughs> it's a low-budget video game movie. It is. I suppose that is true. But here's the thing. There's a big difference between bad visual effects and old visual effects. And with bad visual effects, it's artists dropping the ball, producers getting too in the way of artists trying to do their thing. But with old visual effects, it's just the limitation of the technology at the time. So like, this is a technology thing, you know, you got morphs, you got your basic transitions. You can't really get too crazy with particles because you didn't have the computer power for it back in the day, especially on the budget. But yeah. one thing they could have done is added a light that flickered at the same rate as the lightning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look but at that. Like, everything is super bright except for him. He doesn't flicker at all. That would have taken these VFX shots to the next level. It's a T-Rex thing from Jurassic Park. Like, they didn't have the fancy lighting technology for that either. What they did to make up for it was that they had very specific lighting situations that you could replicate in a computer. And they had that same thing going here, but they didn't follow through on it. 
Had they just yeah. had a directional light source that matched the lightning, it would have really made it blend with the footage. One thing about Mortal Kombat, though, it's a fun movie, and at the end of the day, even if the visual effects are bad, it doesn't actually matter that much if it's a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. This is very true. <laughs> Look at that. He's making me cry. We're looking at Captain America. The first Avenger. Look at him. He's right there, so skinny. This is like the perfect example of their effect working great, of making Chris Evans skinny. Chris Evans was ripped during Super all this. Super ripped. Yeah, because he was playing the final version of himself, and they didn't have the time for him to like skinny down and then buff up. So all these shots of skinny Chris Evans are actually totally buffed out Chris Evans. Wait, are you for real? It's not just a skinny guy and then they're putting Chris Evans' face on the skinny guy? Yes and no. When they actually shot uh, the movie, they would shoot three different takes. And so they would shoot the original shot with Chris Evans, buffed out Chris Evans. So they would shoot it a second time with an actual actor who was a tiny dude. But the effects company would basically just use him as reference and only reference. And then they would also do a third take with no one in the shot at all. Like a clean so plate. Clean plate hell. Yeah. And like <laughs> they, filling in all the all the space that Chris Evans is including behind him. So first things first, like this scene right here that you're seeing in the split screen, that's a straight up liquefy and distort and shrinking everything down. Like making his arms skinny, making his chest skinny, and just straight up distorting your frame. That scene though where he goes and talks to the, the doctor for being recruited, that's a body double. And so times when it's just like skin and he's not wearing a shirt, that's the double, basically. This is an example of where they use the smaller actor and composite in Chris Evans' face on top of his. They just do a head replacement here. But he's still, they actually even skinify they, him they a little even, bit They more. made him even skinnier because apparently uh, small Steve Rogers was still several inches shorter than the small actor they used on set. This is all 2D compositing. They used a program called Flame for all of it. The same flame that was first used in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yes. So the company that does this visual effect is called Lola Visual Effects. I think they're in London, but they're responsible for all of the de-aging effects you've seen in Marvel movies. You know, you have wow. uh, Kurt Russell, uh, Michael Douglas, uh, younger Tony Stark. They, they really specialized in trying to like figure out what parts of the body sag and so that they know what parts to like soften up and smooth out. You can definitely notice in this shot here of Sir Patrick Stewart, when they smooth him over, it definitely kind of gives him that smoothed look. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks less real because it is so artificially smooth and you lose mm -hmm. some of the detail in the highlights. You can still see the wrinkles there. That reminds me actually of something that was really unique about the Steve Rogers, skinny Steve Rogers. So we have texture on our skin. Mm -hmm. You know, you have skin plates, you have hair follicles, basically grain, right? Detail. What happens when you take something that's this big and you scale it down? What happens if you take a big picture and you scale it down? It gets sharper, right? It gets crisper. So all of that gave them a problem. When, when they started shrinking him down, all the texture on him started getting really crisp <laughs> and tiny compared to everything else. And on a movie screen, you can see it. So they actually had to then, after they shrink him down, they had to basically denoise his skin and then re-add grain and noise back to his skin at the correct scale. Another layer they had to add on top of that was de-shadowing his right. chest. Because shadows are what we use to cue us for like shape and volume. Exactly. So big dude with giant pecs cast shadows on his body. <laughs> and then so we take, cool. remove his pecs. It's like, well, what, where are these shadows coming yeah. from? No, they would de-shadow the shot. We kind of lift the shadows everywhere. And then they would shrink it down. Because if they, yeah, like you're saying, if they just shrink it down with the shadows, it's like, where did those shadows come from? <laughs> it was a tremendous amount of work. No wonder. Marvel movies and movies like these have so many VFX artists working on them. For sure, and like this is true mastery of like the human form. If you ever wonder why Leonardo da Vinci cuts open cadavers, if you can understand the anatomy and the muscular structure, then you know what to draw when you're drawing something from reference and from your mind. So as you know, you can always leave a comment down below to help inspire us as to what we should react to next. But if you'd like a more direct way to interact with us, we run a poll on Patreon for every VFX artist react for you guys to pick one of our scenes and Skinny Steve Rogers was one of them. So consider supporting us on patreon.com slash corridor digital, or there's a link in the description below. All right, let's check out the next one. It's me. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> why do you have to bend me in like this? I've seen this too many times, man. Why have oh, you watched this God. so many times? Because it's just goofy. It's like the re same reason why you watch Birdemic. Here they come. <laughs> There's bad that's intentionally bad, which is never good, and there's trying to make it good, and it turned out bad, and that's hilarious to watch. And Ultraviolet is a case of the latter. Dude, look oh, at that. Oh man, what a Ugh. mess. Look at those, those particles shooting out of the, the side of the building there when she goes straight up. Are they tracked? They're not. You're right, they just drift. 
Why are they drifting? <laughs> They're not tracked. <laughs> They're just placed. Okay, obviously physics have just been 100% ignored. <laughs> Straight uh, up. Let me hear the best part. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> What? What? Okay, okay, hold up. Oh, you what turned is on the gravity belt. Right what is happening right there? Some poor artist, I'm sure, is having to hand track this into the shot way after the fact with no tracking data. I think you're right, Nico. I think the motorcycle is 100% real. Yeah, I think so too. And they're actually. just having to deal with the, the footage plates of that because oh, everything no. is green screened here. Was that an attempted retiming there too when she falls to the ground? Yeah, it's gotta be. You can see the wheel. The motorcycle's wheel. probably just like hung on wires or something like that. They're trying to mimic the perspective it will have. Yeah, which is, just... which is a good idea, honestly. Honestly, it's like if you want to get these crazy motions, that's a pretty solid approach. <laughs> that's not how mirrors work. <laughs> that's not how mirrors work. Oh, the perspective boy. doesn't change in the mirror at all. It just becomes flat the whole time. <laughs> all the pyramids are just spewing out steam in the background. <laughs> all the pyramids they broke are just steaming out. <laughs> whoa, whoa, that was cool. The gun. It's too late, man. No coolness is going to save this movie. <laughs> Dude, the smooth skin filter is killing me. They literally took Photoshop's unsharp mask filter and applied it for their look. Unsharp mask us right now. Just, just make us look like ultraviolet. And there you have it. They did get one thing right. The helicopter blade motion blur is making the blue of the sky darker, not just gray. What? Yeah. You're right, look at that. They're actually, they, they, <laughs> so motion blur like that is, it acts like an ND filter. It pulls your exposure down for things behind it and you're getting correct exposure adjustment on the buildings in the sky behind those helicopter blades. And they got that right. How did they get that right but they can't track in particles? Because you have like five VFX artists staying up 24 hours a day just trying to get this done. Yep, yep, yep. That's exactly That's... what's going on. By the way guys, this whole movie is gold. Please watch this movie next time you get a chance. Watching it at like one and a half speed with the sound still on is the preferred way to watch it. <laughs> it's way funnier. Oh, 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 this is so good. All of you pause this video right now and go watch this whole series. It'll take you like 15 minutes then come back and finish watching this. This is super cool. This, yeah, this I love this. Cool. Dude, the way his eye cracks and the blood bubbles up. Oh, I never noticed the blood before. <laughs> That's the thing, like I notice a new detail every time I watch this. See, I know nothing about Warhammer 40K or anything like that. I know nothing about the universe or the IP at all, but this was so cool. Mm. Yeah, everything is perfect about this. The lighting, the action, the camera movement. Wasn't this made by like one, one guy. person? That's, uh, that's what's incredible. All of the modeling and animation and rendering and compositing and editing and sound design and color grading and publishing. So there's two things that really inspire me about this. One is the fact that we've gotten to the point technologically where one guy has the tools to be able to make this. He's able to make it look this good on his computer. Secondly is that there's all these little details being pulled from Warhammer lore. Do you pronounce the start? Down Tell us about all the cool details in this. So Nico told me about this. This is basically one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I'm a huge Warhammer fan. So the great thing about these shorts is that every single aspect and every single cool action setup piece is an actual mechanic in the game. From the weapons they use, like the plasma pistol, the plasma pistol has like a really high uh, armor penetration, which is why it was able to get through that. The whole like he's doing a shooting movement and then he's doing his charge phase and then he's doing his combat phase like this is just like a really sped up version of playing Warhammer on the tabletop uh, <laughs> if this guy doesn't get hired by Games Workshop and make a full-length movie then they're they're messing up hard thanks D yeah. so you'll notice a lot of things in this like depth of field motion blur nice lighting good shadows back in the day you used to have to basically turn on all these things one by one and dial them in until they looked real it was all just hacks so these days if you learn a physically based rendering program like octane or redshift octane or, is our renderer of choice yeah, we, we love octane it actually makes it much much easier to make something like this look real in fact it takes a lot of the work out octane just turn it on put it in a light and it's like well that looks awesome it feels like cheating at first and then you're just like <laughs> this is it this is all i needed but this is like where the technology has gotten to which is wonderful because it's all just there already already just turn it on and simulate it and that's the beautiful thing about it it just it, it gets technology out of the way for the artists and just lets artists create and I think Astartes is one of the best examples of that you should definitely check it out it's an amazing animation we'll have a link in the description below 
Y'all have seen that movie Home Alone. We have this idea. What if we made Home Alone the rated R version? Hello. It's like what would happen if you took a brick to the face from five stories up? It'd probably cave your nose in like that one scene in Pan's Labyrinth. <laughs> so subscribe so that you can find out when we put it out. If you would like to see us react to a TV show or movie, something that you are a big fan of, please leave a comment down below and we will take a look. Yes, we've heard all your requests for Bollywood. Don't worry, we are going to be doing a Bollywood episode soon. It's gonna be real good. We got a subreddit, r slash quarter, link in the description below. We got merch, I'm wearing some of our merch right now. I love it, it's one of my favorite shirts, quarterdigital.store. Also, we got an Instagram, instagram.com slash quarterdigital or just at quarterdigital. All these things are in the description. Please consider following, we got a bunch of cool stuff on all the channels, lots of good stuff coming up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell! Ding-a-ding-a-ding! -a -ding -a -ding!